Good day, Gavin. First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me today. We're doing this over Zoom and, and you're in Europe and I'm in the US of A. And so we may have a little bit of a lag and those kinds of transmission issues just to, as a fair warning to our audience. But before we start, can you, um, I guess I wanna start off with, I'm, I'm intrigued by what your LinkedIn profile says about you and that you are fighting modern slavery by day sharing L&D tips by night. And so I was very intrigued by that. And so I really wanted to interview you and help you share your story about all this. But to get us going here, can you start with uh, introducing yourself and giving us a little bit about your background in L&D? Yeah, sure. So my name's Gavin Herring. I'm currently a training manager for an organization called Slave Free Alliance. Uh, we are part of an international anti-slavery charity called Hope for Justice. And essentially, it, it really what it says on the tin, we fight slavery around the world. Uh, and, and that is really the mission that we've got. Um, so my background, I've been in, uh, I was in corporate L&D uh, for about 10 years, up until about one year ago, um, when, uh, when my previous role was made redundant. And then I joined uh, Slave Free Alliance there as the, as the training manager. Thank you. Um, so tell us a little bit more about uh, about this organization. Where are they? Where, where do they operate? You know, what are some of the, the key initiatives that are ongoing? And and then maybe segue into, so what's L&D got to do with any of that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Slave Free Alliance, we are a, we're a social enterprise. Um, so we are, we're a not-for-profit. Uh, we we work specifically with businesses and organisations. Uh, we're headquartered in Manchester in the north of England, which is about halfway up the UK, if uh, if you include Scotland, which they're trying to not be included anymore, but that's a, <laughs> let's not get into, into that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, we're headquartered in Manchester in the UK. And, uh, and however, we are expanding um, to uh, to serve uh, organizations in other countries as well. And oddly enough, recently started expanding into the USA as well because modern slavery, it is a global issue. It affects um, over 40.3 million people around the world today, more than any other point in history. And uh, so we're just trying to respond and support businesses absolutely everywhere. So you asked the question, where does L&D come into that? So my specific role, uh, so as an organization, just really briefly, we're about just over three, maybe four years old. And, uh, and we were set up really in response to a huge case of slavery that occurred right here in the UK uh, around about five or six years ago. And at the time, and I believe it still is, the largest case of modern slavery identified in Europe. Now, there was a lot of very well-known UK brands that were caught up in this that had victims of slavery uh, working in their supply chains and they had no idea that it was going on. And so when, when they were trying to find out, well, how did this happen? What can we do about it? They started reaching out to our parent charity, Hope for Justice. And so they realized there's an opportunity here, actually, that businesses need this level of support. And that's where Slave Free Alliance was born. A big part of the support that we provide is in training uh, the, the people in those organizations to be able to identify all the way from executive level at the board to understand, well, what is modern slavery and specifically how might it affect us, where are those risks, all the way down to like entry level employees who are coming new into the business. And again, just need to know what is modern slavery? What does it look like? How do I spot it? And most importantly, and this is always going to be close to your heart, what do I do about it? Like, what is the action that is required if I have that concern as well? Uh, so in my role as L&D manager, I work with clients, members of the uh, of Slave Alliance to identify what are the issues they're experiencing and how can we address those through learning and development and performance-based uh, solutions. Excellent, well, thank you. So I'm, I, I want to cheer you on and uh, uh, I personally want to know what can I do to help you and the organization achieve your goals and, and your mission? Um, and, and what can other people do? So are there resources? Uh, and we'll share the URLs as such uh, in the show notes on the YouTube video. Uh, but, I, but I would like to you know, help point people to your organization. And if there is something that they can do, you know, I would like to encourage us, all of us to support this 
uh, your efforts. What, are, what, what can we do? What can those of us in the audience do to help? Well, if you want to find out more information, um, if you're within a business, for example, and you're looking to find out how your business or organization can tackle modern slavery, I would direct you towards slavefreealliance.org. That's slavefreealliance, all one word. Um, and, uh, and you know, reach out to us. There's a contact form on there. You can have a no obligation chat conversation with, uh, you know, with a member of my team. And we'll just give you advice and guidance on uh, on you know steps that you could take and then if you're interested what we can do to support you on that so if you're from from a, a business point of view or a business owner that's going to be the best way to do it as an individual as a as a member of the public as it were um you could always go out reach out uh, and contact uh, at hopeforjustice.org and again all one word hopeforjustice.org and, uh, and again, there's loads of information on there about what modern slavery is and as you might imagine there's a lot of preconceptions and misconceptions about what slavery is now compared to what slavery was, um, particularly during like the transatlantic slave trade, which is a lot of what we sometimes think about. Um, mm -hmm. So we talk about how it's changed and really give, and you can get some information, some knowledge on there about where those risks are. And again, there's resources on there. You can download, uh, there's posters that you can download and print off flyers, different languages, many different things, articles, uh, and again, you can, there's a contact form on there where you can reach out. So we are a, a registered charity. And so uh, there is options on there. If you wish to um, donate either your money or your time, you can do it all, hopeforjustice.org. Thank you so much for that. So uh, before we started recording, I think you said that, that you're operating in the United States as well. So this is, so do you have physical presence or just volunteers all over the globe? We. We do have a uh, presence recently, so very recent expansion into the uh, into the USA. Um, so I believe that uh, we're primarily based in Nashville at the moment in the USA, and uh, and then have sort of various people working in different locations around the US as well. well not to be US centric, but uh, so so where else on, on the planet uh, are, are you operating, and where people might you know if there's something close by, maybe that they can you know show up and you know, man the phones or the computers or whatever, and, and to, you know, volunteer some time. Where else? What are yeah. the locations? So we've got uh, over 30 locations in uh, 10 different countries, if I recall correctly. And again, we're expanding all the time. Um, so we've got the USA, we've got the UK, we've got Australia as well. Um, we've also got places, uh, I think we've got uh, Zimbabwe uh, that we're in as well. Um, so quite a lot of different countries that you can uh, you can look at. And again, I always say that uh, your best bet is if you are interested in finding out more or volunteering your time, uh, hopefulljustice.org uh, should automatically recognize the country that you're in and then give you the appropriate uh, information uh, on there as well. So one last question, I think, before, before we wrap up. So you're in learning and development and uh, are there learning and development products content that is available that people can use to share within their organizations to create greater awareness of the issue and how to, you know, what to look out for. I'm sure there's, you know, signs, warning signs and such that, uh, that uh, you know, people should be wary of uh, on the lookout for. Are, are there such things? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we, from my point of view, from learning and development training wise, um, there are some services we provide which is literally training and uh, i don't know you uh, you share a lot of content on linkedin as well and you know my linkedin profile says that i share L D tips for the most part it's just me starting arguments with people about delivering training when you don't need to deliver training you should really focus on the performance as well um there are some products that we uh, deliver that is that are literally um uh, training as in information stuff because a lot of the people that we work with, um, again, have no pre-existing awareness of what modern slavery is. Understandably, a lot of people think, well, slavery, that was abolished 200 something years ago. And depending on where you are in the world, maybe that's true. There are some places in the world where it hasn't been abolished at all. But nevertheless, and I always say to people I speak to is, since when did something go away just because it was made illegal? And so yeah, slavery didn't never went away, it just changed. And so we we have these information training resources where we want to give people that awareness, that knowledge to say, okay, well, this is what slavery looks like now. 
and uh, and this is what it looks like today and these are the risks where we believe that we sort of stand out separately from other organizations that deliver uh, modern slavery training is that we don't really do anything off the shelf so to speak so it is possible for example um, like with a lot of different types of training to go on to uh, you know uh, ready made platforms whether it's link, uh, links in learning go on whichever one it is and buy something off the shelf and just install it on your learning management system as a piece of e learning um, for us, we feel the value is in actually working directly with clients and members to find out in their context, what are the most relevant risks of slavery that are occurring? And then we will work with them to design the appropriate solution. And some of that will be training because the knowledge, the awareness isn't there. So sometimes we do have to tell. Uh, but other times it may actually be providing them with a resource that they can take away. And, uh, and even though I'm really focused on learning and development. There are other people in my team who do things like gap analyses to identify within their business supply chain where the processes fail. And so we like to think that we, as a, as a holistic approach, we provide a service that training is one of many things that we can provide, but it's always focused on that end goal, which is ideally preventing modern slavery from occurring in the first place. And if, if somebody gets missed or if some people get missed, um, then at least the business knows how to respond and, uh, and and resolve that situation as quickly as possible. Gavin, thank you for all of that. And I, I, now I'm I'm recalling that yeah, you are a performance oriented kind of guy <laughs> in some of the things that you post. Um, and so we're in that kind of a brotherhood, sisterhood of uh, a performance oriented, performance based instruction, training, and learning. Um, and yeah, I like your point there that it's it's not always just about knowledge and skills. There are other resources and, and diagnostics that people can use to figure out, you know, if this is an issue. But it's good to know that your organization can work with people uh, to look at, at their situation in context. Um, any any final words that you might have for our audience? Uh, no, it's just uh, again that reminder that uh, if 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 you've listened today and you've heard that word slavery, for example, and it gives you that emotional reaction that that doesn't exist anymore, that's gone away, which is a common and a perfectly normal reaction. Um, it's just please, you know, get in touch with us, reach out, find, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, as well as learning and development, this is an area that I'm very passionate about as well. And uh, you can always rely on any, either myself or anybody from Slave Free Alliance, or again, our parents' charity, Hope for Justice, having a really open and non judgmental conversation about where you are within your journey and your level of awareness about slavery. And, uh, and then just kind of help you to identify um, how close it might be to you, where the risks might be. And again, always, most importantly, what you can do about it as well. Kevin, thank you so much for sharing with us today. I will put um, the appropriate uh, URLs in the show notes on YouTube and in the blog post that I will post tomorrow. But uh, thank you and, and best wishes in this really important journey. My pleasure, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.